All right, let's talk about chapter three, which Rod calls the plan for the scan. So as I mentioned earlier, scanning is very important. Um, you're going to spend some hours in the first part of your training learning how to look at those instruments, learning how to fly basically from scratch almost, just referencing the instruments instead of referencing outside. Right? Of course, when you're a private pilot student, uh, your instructor might yell at you for watch, looking inside too much, and now that you're an instrument student, it's the other way around. And then as Rod says, getting that scan down is really important. Don't be so much in a hurry that you're like, I have to get to those approaches. Those approaches are the, the cool thing, right? That's what I really want to do. Don't be that person, right? You need to get the fundamentals first. So a big part of that is understanding the scan. So what are your three fundamental skills of basic attitude instrument flying? First one is cross check. Second one is interpretation. and then aircraft control. You have to be able to look at your instruments, decide what they're telling you, and then control your aircraft from there. Important things not to do. Don't fixate. You don't want to fixate on any given instrument. We've all done it, right? You're like, oh, my altitude looks great, and my heading is terrible. Right, I'm drifting, or vice versa. Or, hey, look, I'm, I'm nailing my speeds while well, my altitude is all over the place. Now, when it comes to different instruments that will control different things, we have under the control column in our three skills, we have pitch, What instruments give us pitch information? Well, our AI, our attitude indicator. This is going to be your favorite instrument because you'll notice that almost anything you do, the AI will help tell you if you're doing it right. Altimeter. If your pitch is wrong, you're going to climb or descend if that's not what you desired. Airspeed. Am I speeding up, slowing down? Why am I doing that? It's probably a climb or a descent. Uh, VSI also will give you indications of pitch. Then we have bank. What instruments tell us if we're banking? Guess what? First one, AI, attitude indicator. Second one, DG, directional gyro. It will tell you if you're turning, if that's not what you desire. Turn coordinator won't tell you how much you've banked, but it will tell you that you're turning. And of course, the compass. By the way, uh, just a little rule of thumb. You can say, what's my bank angle going to be for me to fly a standard rate turn? And some people will say, take 15% of your speed. Right? And other people will say, 10% of your airspeed plus 5 degrees. And guess what? They're both right because most airplanes you're probably doing instrument training in are cruising around and you're flying around at about 100 knots. So, you know, after a while you'll, you'll figure this out for yourself. And finally, we have power. What instruments tell us how much power we have? Uh, the tack and manifold pressure if we are so equipped and also the airspeed indicator. Now you might say, how does airspeed tell me about power? If I'm in cruise, my cruise speed is directly related to how much power I have, right? 
if I'm level in flight, I'm going to go faster if I have more power and slower if I have less power. That's just kind of how that works. Now, uh, there's a lot that is made out of primary and supporting instruments. If you look at your book, you will see a chart that consumes all of page 310. It's figure 16. And it says, if you are doing something, here is the primary pitch, bank, and power instrument. Here are the supporting pitch, bank, and power instruments. I would recommend strongly that you spend some time with this table. This table, by the way, comes directly out of the FAA Instrument Flying Handbook. What does that mean? Expect to see it on your test. When you take your knowledge test, it'll ask you questions such as, you are flying straight and level. What are your primary and supporting instruments for pitch, power, and bank? Be careful, by the way, on those questions because they will ask things such as, you are establishing a turn or a climb. And they might ask you another question that says you are established in a turn or a climb. So, you know, read those questions carefully. So, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through every single bit of this table because it's pretty large, but let's just pick one. Um, so, we'll start at the top. I guess it's the easiest one. Straight and level. If I'm straight and level, what are my primary instruments for pitch? Well, for pitch, my primary instrument is going to be my altimeter. Right? I'm in it for the long haul, if you will. I'm just trying to maintain my altitude. I'm looking at my altimeter. Right? What is a supporting instrument for my altitude staying the same? Attitude indicator, if the nose is up, probably climbing. Also vertical speed indicator. Right. So those are supporting instruments, not primary ones. You know, you can think of primary as, well, it's primary. It's the thing that you look at the most, if you will. Um, and then the others will support that. Why is it important to have supporting instruments? What if something has failed? Understanding the role of supporting instruments will help you determine that something has failed. Which is another subject that you're going to see a bit about on your knowledge test. And of course you want to know that in general, right? It's not just so you can pass the knowledge test, it's so you can be a good pilot. Okay. Bank. Directional gyro. Tells you if you're moving or if you're staying on course. Supporting instruments, attitude indicator again. Are you banking? And the turn coordinator. Does it indicate any rate of change of your heading? Power, airspeed indicator is primary for power. Again, your cruise speed is determined by the power setting. And then, of course, you have your tag and or your manifold pressure as a secondary or the indicator of the power. So if you go through your chapter, and I, I would say, honestly, if some of this stuff in this chapter is confusing to you, go ahead and read it through a couple of times. Um, it also will make more sense to you when you go forward and you actually apply some of this stuff. So that's all about primary and supporting instruments. Other things that I think are important from this chapter, he talks about different kinds of scans. Um, these scans are, you know, they're okay. Um, they're not as emphasized, if you will, on the test, on the knowledge test. But, you know, if I have my 
six pack. I've got my big AI in the middle. I've got my airspeed over here, altimeter, VSI, directional gyro, turn coordinator. A very common scan is what we call a radial scan. And it's very simple. We center on the attitude indicator. Why do we center on this? Because this provides us a lot of information. So I'm going to look at my AI. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to be straight and level. How's my altitude? All right, back to my AI. How's my airspeed looking? Back to here. Turn equator. OK, it looks good. Direction of gyro, back to here. BSI, back to here. And that's a very common scan. It's called a radial cross-check scan. Now, you'll notice that there are some other scans that Rod presents in the book. Um, some people do the rectangular cross-check. Nothing wrong with that. And a lot of it depends on your flight condition. All right. Now, the rest of this chapter primarily focuses on partial plant panel. So what does partial panel mean? Partial panel just means that you've failed some of your instruments. Probably these two guys. Right? And now what are you going to do? Well, now you're trying to get by, honestly. Um, and you definitely will do some training on this, right? You're going to start out full panel, doing basic attitude instrument flying. And then from there, you might lose some instruments and try to do basic flying without these gyros. And then you'll have full panel instrument approaches then you'll have some partial panel instrument approaches. So normally, if you're going to have a failure, the most common failure is going to be right here. And remember, this guy was very commonly at least a supporting instrument for different things, for pitch, power, and bank. So now what are you going to do? Well, you don't have these anymore. So let's walk through a couple of quick scenarios. I'm going straight and level. Still got my altimeter. I know if I'm level. I got my VSI. Right? So what's the key? The key, if you lose these gyros, small changes. Right? Try to figure out what straight and level is and they make small changes from there. If you didn't already have everything trimmed out for straight level, first of all, shame on you, because good pilots always fly with the plane trimmed. And second of all, you're going to be in a little bit more hurt now. So you want to establish your baseline, if you will, what straight and level look like. All right, altitude's not changing. The straight part is a little bit harder because you're going to have to use your compass. Again, it's not so bad if you started straight and level-ish when this all began. Right? Um, oh, I have to descend now. What am I going to do? Well, I have a couple of options. I can maybe pull back power if I want to descend at a constant speed. And I still have my power instruments. I'll see my altitude going down. I'll see my VSI. Same rules apply. 10% of my climber descent rate, I start to level off, bring power back in. Right. Oh, I need to make a turn. Again, back to the chart we talked about when we were talking about the compass. If is, it, is it a small turn? 10 to 20 degrees? I'm going to count three seconds for 10 degrees, approximately. It's close enough, right? Don't worry about getting an exact. If you've had all these things fail on you, you're already having a bad day, 
you know, reduce your workload. You're probably stressing out a little bit. So, you know, how do you deal with that? I, w I would say the heading bit is probably one of the more frustrating parts to deal with. Not having the, the bank information. You still have your turn coordinator though. So do you know how much you're banking when you bank? No, but you can know if you're not banking or if you're not turning at least. And you can also know if you're making a standard rate turn. Okay. So that's how you fly a partial panel. Of course, your instructor, you'll spend a lot of time doing that. He talks a little bit about the needle ball and airspeed method. You've got the ball and the turn coordinator and the needle and your airspeed. You can read about that in your book. Uh, the last thing that he talks about is unusual attitudes. Now when you were getting your private pilot license you had to recover from unusual attitudes. Your instructor probably told you correctly that there are two basic kinds of unusual attitudes. Right? There's nose high, nose low. Uh, on your private pilot check ride, you had to demonstrate recovery from at least one of these. It's a pretty good chance that you had a full panel when you did this. For your instrument rating test, you will have to do this without a full panel. Right? So basically, you're going to have just your airspeed, your altimeter, turn coordinator, and your VSI. So all this stuff in the middle, it's going to be gone. Uh, really, there's two basic kinds of unusual attitudes. The nose is high, right? How do you know the nose is high? This guy's going up, altitude's going up, airspeed's going down. What do you do to recover? Push the nose forward, smack in full power, right? Your biggest concern, I do not want to stall. Are you possibly turning? Maybe. What's your first thing that you need to worry about though? Don't stall, right? If you're in a serious bank, okay, well, maybe you try to correct that as you go. But very first thing, get that nose down, get that power in. What if it's nose low? Well, now this is going up. Airspeed's going up, altitude's going down. What do you want to do? Pull power out and gently lay, raise the nose. You don't want to overspeed the plane. You don't want to hit that VNE or anything bad. And, you know, it's like, hey, I kind of almost recovered and then the wings fell off. That's sort of a bad situation. So, yes, those will come back. Those will come back. So if you thought you were done with those when you were doing your private, uh, sorry but those will come back and you're gonna see them again. All right, and that is pretty much chapter three.